Chapter 1 The grimy white sink slowly filled up as the water gushed out of the faucet. God damn it! He snarled as he tried to rub the substance off his hands and his pale arms. What the fuck is this shit? He had no idea what the girl threw on him as she tried to distract him. He hated killing women like that. Granted, he loved to see a woman try to hide her weakness, but it was flat out annoying when they did it to him. Just an hour earlier, he was in the corner of the classroom, examining her, dragging his eyes up and down her. She was finishing packing up her school books and the homework she had to grade into an old tan leather bag. He liked to look at them before he killed, to take in a memory of some kind. The room was dark. It was around 8.30 or so. The left side of her body reflected the light coming in from the street light outside. He wondered why she had shut off the light so early. Perhaps she liked the dark, just as he did. He decided it was time. He took a step, the tip of his boot coming out of the shadow. She froze, in the middle of piling papers atop one another, like a deer in the headlights, as he continued to walk. Ah, he laughed. I loved that look, the shocked, terrified look. What's the matter, miss? He paused to look for a name on a paper. Scarlet. His already wide eyes seemed to grow even wider as she supplied her name for him. Miss Scarlet. He awed as his smile spread full length and slightly nodded his head. It oddly reminded her of the cat in the stories of Alice in Wonderland, the book she just read to her children earlier in the day. What do you want? Is there something I could possibly help you with, even at this hour? And are you okay? Oh my, your face, sir. Do you need a doctor? He looked at her. His eyebrows narrowed on her. His smile slipped into a scowl. His jaw was set and his grip grew tighter on the knife in his pocket as he took in her concerned face. He knew many people had pet peeves. His was the worried, sick look on their faces when they saw how he looked. No, ma'am. It's late. You must be tired. You need not be concerned with my condition. You should be worried about yours. He leapt at her. She screamed as she fell back to the wood floor, the neck of her high heels snapping under her awkward weight. She spied her bag. She grabbed the handle dangling over the side of her desk. She jerked it down, and a smooth metal bottle rolled out. The man gripping her ankles... The man gripped her ankles, and she could feel the pain from the pressure on her muscles grinding down into each other. She twisted the bottle in her hands and pressed the top down while moving up to get her target. The man cursed and smacked the bottle right out of her hands. He was momentarily blinded, and his skin itched like he was having an allergic reaction. He struggled to slip the tip of his fingers under the belt to pull her body closer under him. Managing to do so, he slipped the knife through the teacher's shirt and in between the ribs and thrust it inward. The teacher screamed and her chest lifted off the ground, trying to, trying to somehow get away from the pain. He moved to her ear, and as she continued to scream, he whispered light and soft, Go to sleep, Miss Scarlet. She slowly faded away as he slit the skin on her neck. He was careful to make a sl straight, clean line, the saying, Whatever you do, do it to your best, whispered in his mind. He chuckled and smiled. Her body made a smooth and thin wash of blood when being dragged down the hallway by the hair. Her neck grinded and sometimes cracked as he turned her violently in order to get her in the right position to stuff in the closet. If one was listening, they would be able to hear the handle softly click and the sound of his boots as he walked down the street lit hallway, and the sound of the heavy thud as the school door slammed behind him. He was back in his apartment now, trying to clean up. He couldn't quite get the itching substance off his bleached skin. He calmly sighed, hinting at a growl, and looked up into the mirror. He saw dirt on his face. He attempted to rub it off, but only rubbed more on. He continued to look down his body. He needed to shower. His only hoodie, his shirt, and his black dress pants were piled on the floor as he stepped in the shower. He turned the heat all the way up and put the side of his head against the shower wall. He played back to the moment where he was consumed in fire, to where all he could see was red, 
orange and hints of blue, then to Lou, then Mom and Dad, then finally back to the day he moved in. The feeling snapped him back to the sound of the shower and the feel of water running down him. He continued to clean up. Chapter 2 Light overwhelmed me as I flicked on the bathroom light. I stared at a hazy version of myself through barely opened eyes. I grunted at the sight of my hair, coming in loops and spikes out of my ponytail. Honey, are you ready? My mom called from the hallway. What? It's only si Crap! I staggered and tried to adjust my eyes to the light as fast as I could. I burst through the bathroom door and down to the hall to my bedroom. Ripping open the drawers, I grabbed whatever was decent and threw it on. Grabbing my backpack and slipping on my shoes, I stopped to get my iPod and water bottle. You ready? My mom looked at me with her head leaning to the side. Yeah. We climbed into the car. My mother pulled up to the curb outside of school, right in front. Thanks, Mom, I said with a small wave. <clears throat> oh, dear, remember, I won't be there tonight. Right, I confirmed with a smile and began walking toward the school. Every day, I took in the aged brick and the round window at the very top complete with aged wood floors, old chalkboards, and squeaky desks. I loved old buildings like this. I opened the doors and walked through, checking behind me to see if there was anyone to hold the door open for, and seeing no one, I let it slam closed. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Quadratic formula, everyone. Memorize it. The teacher started to mumble out as I stared blankly at the posters on the wall above the chalkboard. My friend tapped my shoulder and I leaned backwards as she started to gossip to me. I wonder where Miss Scarlet is, she said with a small mischievous grin. She isn't here? I wondered. Nope, she giggled. Maybe she found a boyfriend and is a bit preoccupied. She accentuated accentuated the preoccupied by giving air quotes and that caused her to giggle even more i rolled my eyes shook my head and quietly laughed i turned back to i turned back around to the teacher the door squeaked and opened to reveal mr pap with his thinning hair his striped business shirt and a blue accent and tie mr robelli mr pat asked while looking at him mr robelli slowed down and looked at him as Mr. Pat nodded and waved to him to leave the classroom for a moment. Uh, kids, do the problem on the board the best you can. I'll be back shortly. I immediately turned around to face my friend's raised eyebrow. I shrugged and turned my head to the soft light pouring out of the doorway from the hall. I clicked my pen on the desk, waiting for Mr. Rebelli to return. Instead, Faith strode through the door. She was sniffling and, I cl and she clutched her books to her chest as she was slipping to her seat. The guys seated around her started asking her questions. I watched as she shook her head to one of the boys and started bawling even harder. I narrowed my eyebrows, wondering what happened to her. I took my gaze off the conversation across the desk and saw Mr. Robelli re-entering the room. It looked like he had aged a couple years as he stroked his hair with both hands. He went behind his desk and placed both hands atop it, only touching it with his fingers. He pierced his lips together and said to the class, Today, you'll be going home early, he said with a nod. Miss Scarlet was found by poor Faith. She found her dead in the janitor's closet. The police are almost here and we've called home to your parents. You'll be going to your home room for the rest of the hour so the buses can get ready to take you home. I sat there. I looked at Mr. Robelli stare at the window with his hand to his mouth, while trying to process it all. I heard my friends crying around me, while I trailed my eyes around the room and finally to the top of my desk. What the hell? I whispered to myself. Slowly we left the room. I took one last look at Mr. Robelli, and then went to go wait for Mom out in front of the school. <laughs>